Well, friends, good morning. Welcome to worship here at Christ Covenant Church, whether you are uh, worshiping here in our beautiful sanctuary or watching the video later on today or during the week. We're glad that you've taken the time to come and join us in worship as we continue On the Way to Bethlehem. That's uh, the title of our sermon series here during Advent, On the Way to Bethlehem. And today uh, we're on the way. It's Nazareth, a place of simplicity. We're glad you're here joining us in worship, and as always, I've got a few things to uh, announce, and many of them are in your weekly insights. Again, if you uh, don't get that, let us know. Sometimes uh, email addresses mysteriously just disappear off the list, and we don't know why. Uh, But there's all kinds of great information on here, Uh, things like Brothers in Faith meet on Wednesday via Zoom, Uh, bells and choir rehearse on Thursday night, writers group tomorrow, Uh, book club holiday party is tomorrow night, right? There you go. Uh, All kinds of book people are going, yes, that's right. So there's stuff going on all week and uh, we're just uh, delighted to have you join in some of those things for mission and ministry uh, during the week. A couple things, a couple words of thanks. Uh, Thank you. Thank you to so many of you that worked behind the scenes and worked in front of the scenes for the Philadelphia Handbell Ensemble a concert, which was last Sunday afternoon. Really great, great attendance. A number of you invited friends and neighbors and relatives. That was wonderful. And now let's keep up that inviting uh, momentum, right? And invite them to worship, maybe invite them to Christmas Eve to join us for that. Really, really great event. And we had another great event just two nights ago on Friday night, our kids' Christmas camp. Uh, Meredith took the lead on that, and a lot of you volunteered in all kinds of different ways. 35, 38 kids or something like that were here uh, and heard a clear presentation about why this time of the year is special. It's not because you can go eat a Christmas cookie. Or it's not because, you know, this or that. The real reason is because God sent his son Jesus into the world, and that's why we have peace and hope, and we're going to find out joy today as well. So that was really great. Uh, today, we're going to have an opportunity to spread joy to some of our shut-ins. Uh, if you're up for it, at about 12 45 we're going to leave and do caroling for some of our shut-ins we'd invite you to join us Uh, we're going to be taking the van and maybe some people are driving on their own as well but uh if you grab a lunch hang on fellowship hall until then and uh about 12 45 or so we're going to be heading out to uh bring some joy hopefully to our shut-ins Two other notes, I think, from three other notes from me. Don't forget our community breakfast is coming up uh, at the last Saturday of the month. That's the Saturday after Christmas. Some people are going to be away. And so we would love it if you could uh, help volunteer and serve our community in that way. Leslie and Roland welcome their seventh great-grandchild this week, so that's awesome. And then uh, out on the table where the little Christmas tree was for the angel tree gifts there's some like trays or bowls you know we've had some things where you brought cookies and treats and stuff there are some things there maybe it's yours uh, and that would be great if you could pick pick that up I think that's it for me for right now but welcome once again to worship at Christ Covenant Church on this third Sunday of Advent December 15th 2024. Let us now continue in worship. We finally made everyone to our third stop on our tour. Careful now, the cobbles can trip you. Just watch your footing. Here we are in Nazareth. We move north to the tiny village of Nazareth. Although not so tiny anymore, in those days, 
Nazareth was a place where everyone knows your name. Since it could only support a limited amount of small, a limited amount of people from one small well of water. Mary is visited by the angel Gabriel here in Nazareth with news that she would bear a son. Mary's joy was not limited by the improbability that such a thing could happen in Nazareth. In this simple, tight-knit community of limited resources, a place where survival required interdependence with your neighbors, Jesus would be raised and grow into the teacher and the Lord he was born to be. This week, we wonder, what joy can we glean from the simplest of moments? the simplest of gifts, allowing ourselves to savor this season pregnant with possibilities. The journey continues, and this candle will help light our way. We are on our way to the Life can be so complicated and filled with distractions. We are people who simply want good news. We need a marker on the journey to tell us to stop and notice the wonder of the moments along the way. God's light goes before us. We are not Please join me in prayer and part way through the prayer, I'm going to have us pause and just pray silently for a little pause. Let us pray. Holy and living God, we pray for the refocusing of our lives on what really matters. Too often we allow the complexity of modern life to take over and we fail to sense your presence in our everyday lives. Call us to a simplified joy. Call us to simply pause in the midst of our scheduled mania and breathe in the possibility that you are asking for our attention. We take a pause now, God. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, the joy of our lives. Amen. Friends, let this be a marker of assurance that we are moving in a faithful direction. God is with us every step of our way toward the joy of Bethlehem. Jesus is being born into our lives even now. The Spirit is transforming us in this place. The peace of God be with you. 
A little note before our opening song. Um, all of us have lost loved ones. I think nobody here is immune from that. We have all lost loved ones. And for some, the holiday seasons are difficult because of recent losses or loss in general. Um, our opening hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, which is a favorite of many, including the mother of Kyle New. And Kyle's mother passed away this year. And so we remember her and the many others who have passed away as we sing this hymn, Joyful, Joyful. It's number 11 in the blue hymnal and up on the screen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing. the kids to join me in the front for our children's sermon. hear some laughter. That's good. Well, once again, pretend I am a what? Pretend I am a donkey. That's right. Well, so have some of you been here the last few weeks when this donkey has been here as well? How many of you have been here during those times? Any of you? All right. And how many of you have been here as well to see this donkey? Well, good. I'm so glad. Today, we just sang a song, right? Do any of you remember the first two words in the song that we just sang? Do any of you remember that? Blank, full, blank, full. Do any of you? You forget? You forget full, you forget. No, that's not it. The word was joy. J-O-Y, joy. And look right up here, 
we've got joy there as well. You know, I'm a donkey and I hear things very well. You remember that game we've talked about, I spy with my little eye? Do any of you remember the game that I play? Yes. I hear with my big ear. That's right. I hear with my big ear. And you know why donkeys can hear so well with their big ear? You know, another uh, animal that kind of looks like a donkey is a horse, right? They kind of look a little bit alike, right? But the donkey has a bigger ear than a horse. How much bigger do you think the donkey's ear is than the horse's ear? Anybody want to guess? Ella is showing the, the size wise, and that's right. I think that's about right. The donkey's ear is twice as big as a horse's ear, and so that's why donkeys, I think, can hear so well. Well, one thing that this donkey heard were, was a conversation between two people. And do you remember, or who do you think those two people were that this donkey heard this conversation from. Anybody want to guess? Yes. Mary and Joseph, Mary and Joseph you're right. Mary and Joseph, because they were in a town, they were in a town called, anybody want to, can read that bottom sign there? Ella, can you read it? Nazareth. Nazareth, that's right. They were in Nazareth, and they were going to go to Bethlehem, and what was the donkey going to do in all of this? Yes. That's right. Mary was going to ride on the donkey because it was 65 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem where they had to go. And remember what was going to happen to Mary pretty soon? She was going to have a baby. And this donkey might have thought, hmm, I have to carry that pregnant woman 65 miles? What a bummer that's going to be. That's going to be hard work. But you know what? This donkey wasn't sad about it, wasn't scared to do it, wasn't like, oh, how can I get out of this? Not at all. The donkey, me, I was filled with joy. I was filled with happiness down to my core of my being. And this is why I was happy. Because I heard Mary and Joseph talking and Mary told Joseph this. An angel had talked to Mary and told her this. And then Mary, I think, told Joseph. That's how I heard it. The, the, the Bible says that an angel told Mary that she would bear a son, that she would have a son. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. So even I, the donkey, understood when I heard them talking that this baby she was going to have was going to be Jesus, the Savior of the world. And that's why, even though I knew I was going to carry her 65 miles, I wasn't sad, but I was happy and filled with joy because of this good news that was for Mary and for Joseph and for each and every one of us, that Jesus is our Savior. And so I want you guys to remember that, that I heard that with my big ear, and you guys can hear it with your little ears, and you all can hear it with your little ears, and you know what? Hmm, this is where the donkey isn't sure if he should say it. <laughs> you can hear it with your little ears, and you know what? You can tell other people this good news with your big mouths. <laughs> so there we go. I said it. There we go. The donkey said it. There we go. So I want you guys to remember that and let's pray. God, thank you that we can tell other people this good news about Jesus, that we can be filled with joy that Jesus came into the world and he is the Savior. Thank you for that good news and that joy. And we thank you for each of these great kids that are here as well, uh, the parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles that bring them here to find out about your great love for them. We give you thanks for them and for the good news that Jesus has come into the world. 
And we thank you for that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now, some of you I know might go back to your seats. Some of you might go up to the quiet zone. And some of you might be sticking around here for a little bit. Great to have you here. And we'll see you later. We're each called to serve in mission and ministry in so many different ways, whether you're a donkey carrying Mary to Bethlehem or whether you're a young person singing and blessing us with music. We are each called to serve in so many different ways. And one way that we, a number of ways that we can serve the church is by ministry of prayer, visitation, uh, doing all kinds of things around volunteering, and of course, uh, supporting the church financially so that we can fulfill the mission and ministry we are called to. Thank you for your sacrificial giving, and I would encourage you to help us finish the year strong with our giving, and uh, we call upon our ushers now to receive our tithes and offerings and those other uh, mission and ministry pieces that you're going to commit to doing this week.
Our scripture for today is from Romans 15, verses 12 and 13 in the New Living Testament. And in another place, Isaiah said, the heir to David's throne will come, and he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hope upon him. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. It's always a joy to come to the Lord in prayer, and so let us do that as one body united in prayer. God, we are thankful for today. Uh, we're on the road, uh, Nazareth, and we have hope, peace, and joy today. Thank you for the joy that uh, radiates into our bodies, that we can radiate it out to. Thank you for the Holy Spirit working in each and every one of our lives Allow us to be joy bringers to others. Sometimes that seems hard, like uh, when life just crashes down on us and maybe there's uh, issues going on in our lives, uh, financial issues or health issues, family issues, just issues. But God, um, the joy that we have isn't dependent on how we feel. It's a, it's a state that we have because uh, you live in us and through us. Uh, it's joy isn't happiness uh, we can be sad and still have the joy of the Lord and so thank you uh, for that good news God there are uh, things where we look out in the world and we are sad because of them and we're wondering why these things are happening why are uh, nations uh, going to war against one another why is there strife in the world why are there hard times in countries around the world and we pray God we pray for our country and we pray for Georgia and Syria Mayotte uh, Thailand France South Korea Israel Gaza Ukraine Russia and so many other countries where there are natural disasters or armed conflicts or political divisions going on God we pray that uh, each country including our country would be able to have the shalom that Christ brings, the true peace, not just an absence of conflict or an absence of fighting, but the true peace that Jesus, the King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, can bring into the world. We're thankful to be able to serve you in so many ways, as in Christ uh, you have served us. We pray for different uh, opportunities for mission uh, in and through our church. We, we thank you for our nominating committee and pray for that, for the administration team. We pray for the shepherd's shelf across the street. We pray for World Vision the global, and the Global 6K Walk for Clean Water. And God, we pray for uh, today in the Covenant Missionary Prayer Calendar, we pray for, for uh, Asia, just a tiny continent with a few people. But we pray for Asia, uh, and especially for the regional coordinators for Covenant Missions there, Tip and Patrick Boonrang. Again, we give you thanks for uh, the good news uh, that Leslie and Roland shared with us, a seventh great-grandchild. How wonderful that is, God. How wonderful. And we thank you for that. We pray for those that have been uh, undergoing some health issues uh, and those that may be uh, having some health, uh, uh, maybe some surgeries, uh, procedures coming up. We pray for Barbara and Don, uh, John and Connie, Carl, uh, Joan. And God, today uh, we lift up uh, someone that many of us know uh, Dennis Porter, who for many years did uh, electrical work here at uh, Christ Covenant. He's a member of Christ Lutheran across the street, but Dennis has been in and out of the hospital recently. And God, we lift up Dennis to you, who, uh, man, when something happened, give him a call and he'd be right here. Thank you for his faithfulness and thank you for him, and we pray for him uh, today. Pray for Don Dilmore having a surgical procedure tomorrow and for others that are uh, 
uh, undergoing different procedures and doctor's appointments and things this coming week. Thank you, God. Thank you for the things that have been going on here at church. Again, the Philadelphia Handbell Ensemble, uh, the uh, Kids Christmas Camp for the caroling. Thank you. And we pray a blessing on them and those that have been partaking in them. It's been a blessing to be part of these things. And God, we do pray for a blessing today uh, for uh, the shut-ins when we go caroling. I know it's a blessing for those of us that go, and we pray that our singing uh, will be a blessing as well to those that we visit. God, we take just a few moments now to lift up various issues to you, maybe issues of praise, items of praise, items of concern, and we take just a few moments to bring them to you silently now. We pray all of these things through the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray them in Jesus' name and Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
is born to Well, if you haven't heard by now, then it's time to wake up that we are in Nazareth today. On our way to Bethlehem today is the third week of our series, and we stopped in Rome the first week, Jerusalem last week, and today is Nazareth. Um, Our text is Luke 1, 26 through 38, and it picks up a few verses past where we ended last week after the angel told Zechariah that he and his very old wife, well, he's very old as well, the two of them very old were going to have a baby who is gonna be John the Baptist, who's gonna prepare the way for Jesus. And then fast forward several verses in the same chapter, Luke chapter one, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts in each of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So true confessions... I may have shared this before, and if so, I've already forgotten because I'm 54 and I'm getting old. So, true confessions, Mary was never my favorite or one of my favorite Bible people. I don't mind reading about Mary. I like Mary. I'm not opposed to Mary. But she was never one of my favorites, and I didn't really revere her in the same way growing up and even in my young adulthood because she seems too perfect. She has it all together. I like people who are hot messes because I'm a hot mess. So I like that because it makes me feel more normal. And the Bible is filled with hot messes, am I right? (laughs) But Mary seems to have it all together. She seems righteous. She seems to have a faith. She's engaged to be married. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean you have it all together, but she seems to be going down the track that most women her age at that time would be doing. And she says yes to this impossible thing. She says yes, but over the past few years, I've come to really appreciate Mary 
because, first of all, she wasn't perfect. She was human. <laughs> However, I appreciate her spirit, and I like the fact that she speaks to the angel and asks a clarifying question. She doesn't just say yes. She asks questions first. And she was perplexed, it said. The, text, the passage says she was perplexed and concerned, and she was trying to ponder these things in her heart. One of the, te- one of the versions that we grew up with probably says she, Mary pondered all these things in her heart. So I've come to appreciate Mary, but I still, if I were in charge of picking the mother of the Messiah of the world, I don't think I would pick Mary. <laughs> She's a teenager. I mean, what are they, no offense, teenagers, but what do they know about parenting? <laughs> She's a teenager. And not only is she a teenager, but she's from this backwoods town called Nazareth. Some writings, some famous writings from that day didn't, that referenced geographical areas in the area did not even mention Nazareth. It was so unknown. Nazareth was off the beaten path. It wasn't by a main road. As we heard from the introduction that called the worship this morning, it had one well because, for all the people because it wasn't near a water source. And so one well could only service so many people. So the population of Nazareth in Jesus and Mary's time was approximately 100 to 400 people. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, wow, that's really small. But as Jim mentioned last week, his dad grew up in a town that was 200. My hometown of Vermont is uh, 400 to 500. So you blink twice, you miss my town. But Nazareth, 100 to 400 people, very small, not the bustling metropolis that it is today. Believe it or not, today, Nazareth, is over, the population is over 77,000 people. And it's called the Arab Silicon Valley. It's referred to sometimes as the Arab Silicon Valley. So Nazareth, bustling metropolis today, not when Mary lived there. If I was in charge of picking the Messiah of the world's hometown, I would not have picked Nazareth. <laughs> Nazareth was not known. It was simplistic. It was off the beaten path. And as some of you may remember, in the Gospel of John, one of Jesus' future disciples, Nathaniel, when he finds out there's this man named Jesus and he's from Nazareth, what is his response? Do you guys remember? Can anything good come from Nazareth? The answer is yes, but they didn't know that yet. So if I were choosing the hometown or the person to bring the Messiah into the world, I probably would not have gone with Nazareth and Mary. But as is pretty obvious, I'm not God. (laughs) we're not God we don't get to make those choices and God chose Mary God chose the backwater town of Nazareth with one well servicing a community that could only resource from that one well Mary was clearly concerned the text tells us so but one of the things I love about this passage and this interaction between the angel Gabriel and Mary is that Gabriel not only gives her the baby details, like you're going to have a baby, by the way, and this is what's going to happen, and he's going to be from the line of David, yada, yada, yada. But Gabriel also gives her a toolbox from which to be resourced. He says she's not going to be alone. She, he starts out with, you are favored. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Later, he told her again that she was favored by God. And then he told her later on that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and the power of the Most High would overshadow her. So the word favored, I always thought it meant like Mary was God's favorite, which might be another reason why I didn't really love her growing up, but I thought maybe Mary was one of God's favorites, and she might be, I don't know. But the word favored is not, in this context, that does not mean favorite. The word favorite is the same Greek word, charis, as our word for grace. So essentially, Gabriel was saying, hello, Mary, you are filled with grace. You are already receiving the grace of God in your life. Mary already had something in her toolbox to help resource her for what was to come. She had been graced by God, and Gabriel mentioned it again later on in the conversation, You are favored by God. So in other words, again, Mary, you have grace. You're filled with grace. Grace is a part of your life. You're not alone. You have the grace of God. He told her the Lord is with her. And I like to believe that this knowledge that Gabriel gave her these little details, that this knowledge would have helped her say yes to God. 
that it wasn't just that she was so righteous and so faithful and so perfect that she just said yes after asking her clarifying question, how is this possible? I'd like to believe that these details also helped Mary say yes to God because these details would have helped Mary realize I'm not alone. This situation might be impossible. The situation is crazy. I'm perplexed, I'm confused, I have no idea what's gonna happen. We have the knowledge of, we have the advantage of history, right? We know what happened. We know how her life would be turned upside down. We know the tragedy, the trauma, the sorrow, and the joys and celebrations that Mary would experience in her life with her son, Jesus. But she didn't know all that at the time. What she did know was that God was with her, that the power of the Most High would overshadow her. And that term for overshadow, I'm going a little bit deep on the word language here, I realize that today. But the term for overshadow, it's the same term that's used to um, re reference when the Israelites were wandering the desert forever and ever, and the cloud, the, the uh, presence of God overshadowed them. So to overshadow in this context does not mean, oh, oh, it's a bad cloudy day, it's bad things are gonna happen. To overshadow meant God's presence was going along with Mary. Mary literally carried the presence of Jesus Christ in her body. Mary was favored. Hello, kids. <laughs> Mary was favored by God which did not mean that she was necessarily his favorite, but Mary was graced by God and filled with grace. And friends, we, we do not literally carry the body of Jesus. We are, none of us are pregnant with the Messiah. But as followers of Christ, we are challenged to carry the presence of Jesus everywhere we go. God is with us. We also are favored. We already, if we have received Christ as Savior of our lives, we already have Jesus' God's grace in us, within us, in spite of us, in spite of all of our messiness. We might be hot messes, but the grace of God is with us, and the power of the Most High is going to be walking alongside of us, overshadowing us, and we are to carry and bring that presence to those around us. This is cause for joy, friends. This may come as a surprise to those of you who know me really well, but I'm not naturally joyful. I'm more of an Eeyore type. <laughs> Woe is me, life is hard. Yeah, I get there. I get there. I can reflect and I can see where things worked out well, or even if they didn't, I can say, yeah, but I, you know what, I grew. Okay, that stunk, but I grew. I can, I can get there. But initially, I'm not the most joyful. I tend to vent and complain and talk about what might go wrong, and I anticipate every situation possible. That's necessary sometimes. We need people like me sometimes, but we don't need me all the time like that, in that frame of mind. <laughs> because at times, what I need to do is to recognize that in the moment, whatever circumstance, whatever's happening or has happened or whatever I'm anticipating might happen, God is present. God's grace is within me. God's grace goes with me, overshadows me, and I am to carry that and bring that grace and love to others as well. This season of our lives and our country and our world is challenging. There's a lot of war. There's a lot of bad news. In our own nation, we have a lot of division. One month out from the election, half of us may be celebrating. Half of us may be grieving. Some might be in between. But the reality is that we are a nation, a community, a world in need of the love and grace and joy of Jesus Christ. It starts with us. It's not going to start with politicians, but it does need to start with us. So how can we embody the grace of Jesus in our conversations? in how we treat others online and in person, and how we speak, and how we pray, and how we treat the underprivileged, and those who are victims of injustice. How can we embody 
the grace and presence of Christ in this challenging, complex world. Mary literally carried Jesus in her body. <laughs> she literally carried him, and because of that, we have the incarnation, and our lives were transformed, and the world was transformed. We're not those individuals, but we can help others come to recognize the grace and love of Jesus in their lives today and every day. Friends, life, a, a favorite professor of ours, Fred Holmgren from seminary, had a phrase that we've said to you many times, I'm sure. Life is mostly complicated. <laughs> Amen, Fred. It is. Life is mostly complicated. But one thing is for sure, regardless of the complexities of your situation or this world or this community, regardless of all that, God is present and wants to bring you joy and grace and life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 138 in the blue hymnal, and it will be up on the screen as well. It's People Look East. Please stand and join in singing as you are able. love the Lord is on the way and love the Lord is also here with us right now. As you go out this week, go in the presence and the grace and the love of Jesus the Christ. Be carrying that light, that life, that presence to those around you as well. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.